how is it that you are, how is it that you believe you will be able to decide who should stay and who should go? And how is it that you've developed this detailed plan? Like what sort of, what sort of analysis have you conducted that enables you to determine what should be shrunk and how, and to know that that's going to cause beneficial rather than damaging consequences? So there's something we have going for us here is that I don't have to start in a vacuum. There is this thing we call the U.S. Constitution, already proven, time-tested to be the best operating manual for a nation and preserving liberty and human history. That's certainly my view. Well, it turns out that much of the excess we have seen came from running afoul of that operating document. So many of the administrative agencies that were created were created in a manner that Congress actually never gave those agencies the power to wield the power that they do. The Supreme Court has, in the last two years, already begun to recognize that. West Virginia versus EPA, a case where the Supreme Court held that the EPA's regulation, climate-focused regulations on the coal industry, were unconstitutional because we, the people, never gave the government that authority. And Congress, in turn, never gave that authority to this three-letter agency, which nonetheless ran afoul. Well, if those EPA regulations are unconstitutional, then it turns out most of the federal regulations today are also unconstitutional. Turns out most of the employees implementing those regulations are actually unnecessary. So in many ways, I don't think we have to start in some first principles whiteboard of a vacuum and say, how are we going to design and draw this up? That would be a fatal conceit, I think. That would be hubris, I think, designed for failure to think that one man, Elon Musk or myself or anybody else, is just not going to happen. You're, it's destined for failure. But if you're following a time-tested framework for the operating manual for this nation built, an operating manual built in the shadow of the Declaration of Independence, the greatest mission statement for a free society in human history, well, then I think we actually are doing nothing more than implementing that which is already time-tested and true. And so, you know, I don't want to, you know, short sell myself here on, I mean, I have, I'm 37 years old. I've built multiple multi-billion dollar companies. I do understand that if somebody works for you and you can't fire them, that means they don't work for you. I understand what meritocratic well, hiring them, looks then. like. You work for them. You're, you're, you're in some ways their slave because you're responsible for what they do without any authority to change it. So, I understand these principles, but it's not that experience base, not Donald Trump's, not Musk's, not mine, that could be sufficient to get this right at the level of the nation. It is actually a firm understanding and commitment to the Constitution itself. And that brings me back to that rare combination. You can't rely on your advisors for that. That is not a substitute for saying, okay, I'm bringing executive experience and then I'm going to ask my advisors how it's done within this legal framework and ask the lawyers. And I think that's the difference between me and Trump. And I think that'd be the difference between me or someone like an Elon Musk or anybody else who would be great as a, who is great as a business builder and is a good alternative to the professional political class doing this in Washington, D.C. But I think it requires a deep intellectual, historical, principled, understanding, passion for, and commitment to that constitution to see that through, but not doing it as somebody who's coming in as just a law professor or a lawyer, they're not going to have the skill set to actually, the fortitude to cut and see that through.